Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Super Review Show's Mixed Bag. How is everyone doing today? I hope you're doing a great thing today. I'm joined by my friend, Bill. Hey, guys, what's going on? Um, tonight's episode of Mixed Bag has, we had some technical difficulties, and it's not live because someone forgot to pay Zoom and have it live anyway. So you can blame me for that. Forgive me, shame, shame, I know, but like... Um, Shame! <laughs> Tonight we're going to be doing our uh, on this episode of Mixed Bag. We will be doing our top ten film scores. You know, it's not the soundtrack, which is like a song in a movie. We're talking about the actual music in the film and how we rank those amongst ourselves. So I was going to go Bill ten, me ten, and we're going to go back and forth just like that. Bill, are you ready to list off your top ten? Yeah, I'm ready. Film hey, scores? We're going to do soundtracks next week, right? Yes, we're doing oh. soundtracks next week. You said yes. We'll be doing that. Hopefully, we'll be live by then too. So, but I will keep you posted on that. So, anyways, Bill, why don't you? Hopefully, someone pays the bill. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> so, Bill, what is your number 10 movie score of all time? Tell me what it is. Okay, my number 10. My number 10 is from the movie Patton. I okay. talked about that in my top 10 openings. It mm -hmm. just has that great military march feel. Like yeah. the opening is a do do do. It's like this soul trumpet song. The and then the march later on in the movie is it's just that triumphant like you feel like you're getting pumped up to go to war yeah not that i promote going to war but right it just has that fired up feeling yeah, just I just love the simple start of it, and then how it just transforms into this epic sounding march. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think the composer Jerry Goldsmith oh, really great. had it on tap with that one. He was great when he was alive. He was he was dead, a great composer. Yeah. So, and um, I just want to say before we go on here, um, yeah, we're gonna have we we we're probably gonna have the, some of the usual suspects on this list, but. My list, I put in a few oddballs, you know, because I want it to be, you know. Yeah. It's all good. Interesting. You want it to be diverse, and that's completely fine with me. Anyways. Diversity! Yippee! Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so I just love the opening of, I just love the opening theme, and I love the march. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you're yeah, number, so 10. number 10. Pat. Yeah. Number, number 10 number is Pat. Nine. My number 10 is... This may this may not surprise you. This may surprise you for those of you who have watched me for any period of time. Um, Shawshank Redemption is really one. Of, yeah, the the actual like the score for this the movie itself really hit. I used to listen to like this is how pathetic my life is, but like I used to listen to movie scores all the time on the bus on the way to school, and I would listen to like Terminator, RoboCop, uh, in a Predator, and when when I got so to Shawshank was listening listening to whatever music people were listening to from 2012 to 2016 you they're listening to Nicki Minaj Justin Bieber Maroon 5 and you're listening to Jerry Goldsmith film scores on the bus yeah I was I was totally listening to like the most unusual ones but when I got to Shawshank Redemption man this score is so emotionally driven uh Thomas Newman was the composer for the film he was his score is fantastic to me uh, and he did a magnificent job with that film. Everything from like the prison scenes themselves to the ending of the movie. All I, I really think top, you know, top my number ten has to be Shawshank Redemption for this um, um, movie score. So we did not swipe right, Bill. Bill, what is your number nine? My number nine. Oh, we're definitely not going to swipe right on this one. No. <laughs> my number nine is. This is actually a bit of an unusual choice. My number nine is Edward Scissorhands. Interesting pick. I like it though. It's um because here's the thing. Um the music starts off just like a like a music box. Yeah. And it has like that music box like twinkling melody. Mm -hmm. And then it hears you have that um that um like rom as a, I think Danny Elfman described it, sort of like that Romanian Jewish chant, his words, not mine. Mm. And it's just so 
emotional, and especially the ice dancing, the ice yeah. dance scene with that score. It's just, it just goes together so beautifully. Mm-hmm. And especially at the end, I should have put this on my top 10 endings list, but mm. at the end, when, um, when they're saying, when, um, you know, I'm not getting into too much spoilers, but when they say, is Edward yeah, but- still alive? He goes, I think he is. And the music is playing because it never snowed before he came and now it's snowing. And then you hear the music and you see Edward. It's just great. And I think the thing is, Danny Elfman, this is like one of his more serious scores once you think about it. That's true. I mean, he did Batman, but this is definitely a very dear, a serious score. So, But like, no, it's like if you think of like the other scores he did, like if you think of the, um, the whatchamacallit, the score from... The score from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the do 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 Um, or you hear the score from um Beetlejuice, da na na na, because those are more like the quirky. Yeah, and he just like takes it seriously, but it's not like oh my god, this is such a drag. It's actually it gets you really invested, and I also kind of like like how they have like that quirky music during like when they're in the neighborhood for like suburbia but yeah doo, 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 doo. it's just i think i think this is like one of elfman's best works wow I, I dig it i dig your number nine my friend i dig your number nine all right my turn so bill we didn't swipe right but my number nine is actually i couldn't really specify which movie in the franchise that I'm, I'm talking about. So I'm just going to say that the James, the score for James Bond, any of the films, to be honest with you, is like, and I, I'm, I, I know I'm putting like 25 films up, but, but oh my God, when you hear that, dun, 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 you know, I'm doing a bad job at re- replicating it. But when you hear that iconic, like, dun, 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 like everyone knows yes. that. Everyone, everyone knows, knows that, that James Bond, like that, uh, that rumbling guitar, and the horns to it. It's so iconic. It's so brilliant. So my number nine is the James Bond. And I'm not specifying Live and Let Die or Diamonds Are Forever. I'm, d- I'm just saying specifically the James Bond franchise as a whole. The whole, like, that one iconic score. I forget the original composer who did it. But, like, his actual writing of that score was brilliant. And it's so iconic to this day. In fact, when I'm driving my car around, I actually tend to listen to this and pretend I'm James Bond while I'm driving. Don't drive fast, kids. Um, <laughs> but my number nine is James Bond and any of the films, to be honest. So um, nothing specific but James Bond. That's my number nine. So, Bill, what is your number eight? My number eight is, okay, you heard me gush about this score before. My number eight is... Okay, a little unusual. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, no. I, I, I don't want to say I kind of figured that, but I definitely understand where you're coming from. Really? Because um, I, like, you... I know, because when you, you, first off, you're very passionate about Hunchback of Notre Dame. You're very passionate yeah, about Yeah, I've talked it. about it before, folks. Yeah, it's like one of your favorite animated Disney movies. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm not going to talk much about it because it's your selection, but like, I definitely see where you're coming from. I definitely see where you're coming from on that. Because here's the thing. Um, the soundtrack maybe it'll be on the list next week who knows i'm keep you got to keep them hanging keep them hanging um oh yeah anyway but just like the score it should like i said the songs are really good but the score is just fantastic like it just like the the um it just makes the film sound freaking gigantic and what really i think makes it so great is they actually have a choir mm. And the choir is just like, they actually recorded this in a cathedral. Hmm. I didn't know that. And it was just, it makes the film sound so freaking gigantic. Hmm. And it's like the, and, you know, when you hear the, ah, ah, or, you know, during the, or during when they're doing like the Gregorian chants. I think my favorite is from, I think my favorite thing is the score is um, the scene when Frollo is about to execute Esmeralda and you hear that choir, the dum, dum, da, da, da. and, 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 and up on the, and 
Frollo's about to burn Esmeralda, and then Quasimodo breaks out and saves her, and then he has her go yells, Sanctuary! <laughs> Sanctuary! And then, and then you hear the choir, ah! and I'm like, it's just such a good, it's just so chilling. And Alan Menken, who is Disney's, I don't, who is Disney's darling, who also did the music to Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Yep. Aladdin. Classics. Pocahontas. Um, and you know what? I got to admit, I'm very disappointed. He was nominated for this for an Oscar, but he lost. For the really? Season. He didn't win. Like the last Oscar he won was for Pocahontas when he won for Best Original Score and Best Original Song for Colors of the Wind. Yeah. Um, but he even called Hunchback his favorite work, his favorite score. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that is such a drag that he didn't win because that would have been, that is probably, and I am not going out any limb saying this, that is probably his best work. I would say it's better than Little Mermaid, no offense, better than Beauty and the Beast. And I know I would. And I know some people would probably want to hurt me for saying that, but I think that is honest to God, his best work. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Everyone's entitled to it. So that's what it is. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. All right. Oh, what's yeah. your number eight. My number eight might surprise you, just like Shawshank surprised you. But here's my number eight. And after rewatching it recently uh, on Blu-ray, which I, I still stand by Blu-rays, I will. I can make a whole separate video about that. But um. Like physical media. Anyways, my number eight is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that score for that film, not just for the iconic, like, wah, 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 like, not, sorry, like, not just for that, but like the actual, like, compositions of the score itself throughout that three hour film made it feel like I was actually sitting down on set in the spaghetti western watching Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cliff. And uh, I forget the, the, guy, the other guy's name. Uh, like I, watching these actors do their thing. And I felt like I was actually there because of er- Ernio Mercone. I forget how to say his name. Like his score for those for those three films, uh, uh, for Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, timeless scores in my opinion. I love that. Wah, wah. Like most bands walk on to that. It's so iconic. And there's like stuff of it on YouTube now and, it's fantastic. Overall, I love that score for the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's why it's my number eight. So, yeah, my number eight is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And by the way, just plug, we did a movie commentary of that not too long, a couple, about a year or two ago um, on the YouTube channel. Check that out. Um, Bill, what is your number seven on the my Super Show? My number seven is, okay, my first John Williams one. All right. Oh, good. My number seven is Schindler's List. Ooh, okay. I believe, you know, from like what I said about Danny Elfman with Edward Scissorhands, mm-hmm. um, I feel like, you know, John Williams, most of his scores are upbeat, fun. This one, I think, is a lot more somber. Yeah, it definitely you know, shows how we... Movie, it better be somber. Um, but just the... The opening, um, the... Just the main theme. Yeah. Which is played by, um, which is performed by world renowned violinist Istak Perlman. Uh-huh. Um, it is just such a hauntingly beautiful, but yet sad mm-hmm. theme. It's a, it's this beautiful violin solo. Um, it's just, it's, it's really just, it makes you stop and listen. Oh, crap. And it's yeah. just so simple too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's like there is an orchestra, but it just it's just such a simple and it just really makes you feel the pain. And another thing is um there is a scene um when when the Nazis are rounding up the Jews to send them to the concentration camps. Mm-hmm. And there's like this children choir in the background. I think they're singing like Hebrew or something. Mm-hmm. And it's just really, it's just really 
it's just such a really heartbreaking because you're it's really making you show holy shit this is actually happening yeah. and and the thing is i think for most of the score it doesn't have to have the big you know it, it doesn't have to have the big it it can be simple it can be quiet and it can still be emotional yeah. but you know i think there is like a big part of the score it's um it's when um okay it's um i'm not gonna get into too too much detail but there is a scene when um oscar schindler when they show one of the camps in there um, doing things yeah that are and it, and the choir is there and it that really Prosody is happening. Yeah. What is can be serious can be score. Um and also the last um in scene that I talked about last week when we did talk about top ten movie endings. Um mm -hmm. There's actually a beautiful version of the main theme when Oscar Schindler is leaving and they're playing that on classical guitar. Oh, wow. And it's like, and you hear it's the dun, 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 and I'm like, yeah, I, I just think John Williams just did an amazing job with the score. He, he's definitely one of the best. He just, and you know what? I think it's one of those scores that's not really mentioned when you talk about John Williams' score. Because they like to focus more on stuff like, you know, again, Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark and E.T. Yeah, I mean, those those are all iconic, of course, but yeah, but um, yeah, I think this is probably one of John Williams' best. All right, what's number seven? Hopefully, it's something on a lighter topic. <laughs> yeah, well, I I think I definitely think it is. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull it up for you. Uh, my number seven, and this might surprise you, but I'm going to talk about it because I thought more about it. And I said, this makes a lot of sense. Like Ghostbusters. Not, no, no, not, not obviously we all, we all think of the iconic theme song. I know what you, you mean. Um, but like the actual like score of that movie is really good. Like, yes, it's like a pop culture phenomenon type of movie. Yeah, they're going to make a sequel. It's coming out next year, this year, whatever, whatever. But like, Think about it, the actual like eeriness to it, like in the opening scene of the movie with like the librarian and stuff like that. I mean, think about it. That's so creepy and so like nerve wracking, and it really gives you the chills. I mean, a lot of people obviously people know Ghostbusters because of the the song Ghostbusters, but the actual score itself, like the like the in, in paranormal sound effects, love it. I really do. That's why Ghostbusters is my number seven. And I think that it's a little underappreciated for its score. Yeah, it's known for like it's it's a great movie and all that stuff. But like the Zool theme, I think is great. Oh, oh my God, yes, that's right. I I was just thinking about that too. Like Zool's theme and like um when they were first like that, that, that when they were first on top of the building, like get them up, yeah, like that like build up score was great. Um, anyways, my number seven is Ghostbusters, and uh, yeah, that's uh, my number seven. Bill, what's your number six? My number six is the Avengers theme. Ooh, that's a and that's actually not on my list. I should have put that. I just really love the buildup. Yeah. Oh my god. It just has that so intense. Again, I put it in my car. You have you what you drive you drive that. You, I, you I, that on the way to work. True story. If anyone is watching this, I do drive around listening to that in my car with the windows blasting. But anyways, that's that's the point. And just the climax of dun 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 dun. Because every time I've seen like any of the Avengers movie, 
the minute I hear like those da na na na, I'm like, let's yes. so good. Like, let's go, let's go, let's do it, baby, let's do it, let's do it, let's um, do it. That's a great pick. Oh my god. Yeah, but. I just really, I love the excitement for it. It is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, just a quick thing. I have an Alvin Silvestri. I have two Alvin, Alvin Silvestri scores in my list, but I'll get to them in a little bit. Yeah. So. But anyway, I think that really starts the, really starts the Avengers movies on such a good note. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's my number six, the Avengers. Movie. All right, what's your number six, my friend? My number six is Jaws. Oh, should have put that on there. Yeah, see, right? Uh, Jaws to me, like, of course, the opening, dun, 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 the buildup of a shark eating someone, but the actual, like, score for the movie itself, like, like we're going to, like, the, within the scene where uh, Quint's like, we're, we're going to need a bigger boat. Like, that music you hear in the background from John Amos. Yeah, like we, you talked about Schindler's List before, about having like a, a film score that's like kind of sad. There are some, not sad, but there's some scary elements in his score in this movie. Uh, John Williams, it is. And this, uh, to be honest, iconic. I mean, people still like are afraid of the sharks today. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, because uh, you know, when we, I think it was two weeks ago when we talked about um, top 10 movie openings. Yeah. I think what makes that iconic score like so, mm. what makes it so iconic, especially the da da, dum 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 dum. It shows it's progression. Like, yeah. This is the question you ask: What's more scary, what you see or what you hear? Of course, no. Th- th- that's a whole different like conversation, absolutely. But I definitely know. I, I think that music kind of contributes to it. I think that music, I think John Williams score scared the crap out of people today because when they think of the beach and they think of like Jaws and stuff like that, they think of the score automatically. They really do. Uh, Anyways, my number six is Jaws. And uh, Jaws, you know, iconic film, of course. It's a classic film. Uh, One of Spielberg's first films, actually. Uh, Love to see it. And uh, my number six is Jaws. Bill, what is your number five? Yeah, we're really breezing through this here, folks. We're so, doing pretty good tonight. We're doing well. Bill, what's your number five? My number five is JT. You're going to love me for this one. Yes. Raiders of the go. Lost Ark. Let's go. I just think I love the Indiana Jones trilogy. Theme. It's It's just so... I just love the... It's like uplifting. Yeah, it's so uplifting, and it actually puts you on like a – it really puts you on like an adventure. Yeah, it's an adventure soundtrack. It's such an adventure soundtrack. And like the love themes are pretty good too. Oh, yeah, with Mary and Ravenwood, yep. Yeah, but it's like the – when you hear the – You call this archaeology. (laughs) What was that? You call this archaeology. <laughs> dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. Yeah. And it's oh, like, um, it's just such a, dum, da, da, dum, dum, da, da, dum. you know, you it's like, you know, you're in for a good time once you hear those notes. Oh yeah. And uh, it's like, you're ready. The movie is ready to take you on an adventure. Classic. And that's why I love it so much. Uh, that's a, that's a good number five, my friend. That's a good number five. I wonder if my number five was, and I didn't swipe right with you. But my not- swipe right. Sorry, Bill. I'm sorry. <laughs> my my number Maybe five. Maybe it's best we see other people. <laughs> <laughs> my my number five is Forrest Gump. Okay, I can see that's a nice like, simple score. It's not necessarily again when I was on the bus and I was listening to film scores left and right. I would just go through like a strict order that I had. Right, I got the Forrest Gump, and I'm like. There's this. I wish I could. I wish I would could play this on YouTube and I, you could hear what I'm talking about. But like, if you look at the actual film score for Forrest Gump, the main theme, mm-hmm. um, there's a part where he starts. The part, the scene where he starts running, that the string part, yeah, of Alan Silvestri score, priceless, priceless score. And like, it's like, it's just like, like, it's 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 it's, it's so iconic, and it's so like. It, I'm. I, I won't go so far as to say perfect, but for like fitting a character and a 
score, you couldn't really get that. I mean, you, Indiana Jones, you just Indiana Jones, but like that's a pretty good link up. But like between Forrest Gump and uh, Alan Silvestri's score, I think it worked out very well, and it obviously did a great thing. Uh, the, uh, the soundtrack, the soundtrack of songs, you know, well that that could be next week, but like, um, but Forrest Gump for me, yeah, number five is Forrest Gump, the actual uh, the uh, Alan Silvestri score um, of Forrest Gump. Bill, what's your number four? I just want to say before I go to my number four, I just want to piggyback off that for a second. If that's okay. Um, sure. I just really, it, and it's just, it's just such a simple soundtrack too. Oh yeah. It's very easy. It was just such a simple score. You, you could fall asleep listening to it, to be honest. It's that easy. Yeah. So number four. Really you fall asleep listening to? I'm um, okay. No, 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 not really. But my number four is the Godfather. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. That's good. Good um, pick for number four. Wow, good one. I just like really like first the iconic, but do, 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 do. yep. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and then it's just, it's just you hear that horn, and then throughout the movie you hear the more orchestral parts. Yeah, you hear the different parts, right? And then the um. Yeah, I know this is kind of cheating, but this is like an instrument. There is vocals. It's um, the song um, what you might call it um, speaks softly. Love that. Yep. Yep. And it's just, and my favorite version of. Michael, Redden when he marries the woman in Sicily. The um, the, the and they're it's like a classical guitar thing. Oh, me and my damn class mm -hmm. It's like um, I just think it's that really nice, simple thing. And okay, this is kind of cheating. Um, I want to also throw in if that's okay with you. Now you did this with James Bond. I can do this with The Godfather. So fair is fair. Um, fair is fair. I also really, and I just thought of this now, I really like the opening to um, the opening music to Godfather 2. Mm -hmm. Well, you haven't seen it, but no, like yeah. young Vito is coming into um, Ellis Island and just the music. Do, no, 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 no. It's just like, it sounds like a young, it sounds like a young boy who's scared because he's there alone. And what is he going at? And also, I want to. Um, I also want to say one more thing. Getting back to the theme, this is kind of a personal story. Um, um, back in November, um, I lost my cousin slash godfather. Um, Sorry. And that. My, thank you. My mom and I went to his wake, and I kid you not, they were actually playing in the background that. <sighs> I'm like, no. Is that the theme from like my mom and I were just leaving like and I hear that like, mom, is that theme from the Godfather? <laughs> I, like, I think it is. And you know what the ironic thing is, is I told you my cousin who died, ironically, he was actually my godfather. So <laughs> I'm like thinking, God, is that you? Like, is this like a sign of something? What's going on? What's going on? Up is down, down is up. But Left now, is right. Oh, yeah. It's just, I think that score is absolutely gorgeous. I agree. I agree. We're on number four, correct? Just want to make We're sure. We're on number four. All right. Now, my other back to back Alan Silvestri score, Back to the Future. Oh, that's not. All right. Hear me out. Back to the Future. One of my top 10 favorite films of all time. That he composed the whole trilogy. But look, when you hear the when you hear the um, in Back to the Future, the first one, where they go, he he's he's going back to the future, um, and he is going, um, like in the part where Marty like gets the in, in the in, in the DeLorean and he's about to go eighty eight miles an hour to go back to the future, like that score, the that part, the music just plays such a pivotal role in that scene, let alone the whole movie, and it's iconic. That he just like goes 
and it, the, the music builds up and then as, as it gets closer to lightning rod and the boom and he goes back to the future <laughs> timeless timeless idea uh this score is great this is a great score oh my god i i do you think i drive around listening to james bond and good and the bad and the ugly i drive around to back to the future and ferris bueller's day off but that's all another story uh oh yeah <laughs> i have a lot of fun driving um, but Back to the Future is one of those iconic film scores for me, and I'm putting that at my number four. So, uh, yeah. Bill, what is your number as we enter the top three? What's your number three? My number three? Okay, a lot of people are probably going to be pissed off that I didn't put this at number one. Okay. But please, everyone, remember, this is my list. It's his opinion. <laughs> my number three? Number three, really? Star Wars. No, I know. I'm just I'm like number three, huh? Yeah. Like, how can you not put this in the top five? Mm -hmm. You hear the you know the iconic. You that and also I love the imperial. I love the sunset. Oh my god. It's like oh. just such a, it's just such a. It's a moving score. It's like you're as you sit there and watch Luke just look at the sunset. It's just, and um, and also the dun 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 you're like, it's like when you first see Darth Vader, you're gonna do it, and you're here like, oh my god, this this guy is really serious shit here. He's evil. <laughs> and then you walk in, and then he walks in, and you're like, oh, this music is so fitting to it. Ah, oh, it's perfect. That 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 whole this like music is so fitting. The Imperial March is one of the like people like they they do it in baseball games. Like, yeah, at Yankee games when they introduce in the visiting team, they play the Imperial March. Classic. And then when they introduce the Yankees, they're playing the um the, the victory the, celebration. The main title, yep. So funny. But, yeah, but anyway, John, yeah, but yeah, that is another John Williams one. Mm -hmm. And I've seen videos of John Williams. He just seems like not only is he a great composer, he just seems like such a nice guy, too. He's 80 something, so he's doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, like um there was actually, I was actually watched this a couple weeks ago and I actually just watched it today. Um, yeah. There were actually two boys. They had to be like, I don't know, young teenagers. Yeah. They had their trumpets. They're standing outside John Williams's house. Oh, no. Like five years ago. And they're playing the Star Wars theme. <laughs> That's funny. And it's like, I'm, I'm like thinking, woo. And like, doo -doo. and they're like playing. And they're like playing it, and and then like the woman who's recording goes, "He's right there!" And like you know, he's like, "Hi, Mr. Williams." <laughs> and they're like, "They're trying to he die to you guys. He's right there. Hi, Mr. Williams." And they're like shaking his hand. And he said, "I think you guys sounded really good." I heard the note. I'm like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Whoa!" Oh my god! <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And also, <laughs> there was this um. I'm sorry, I'm hogging all the time here, but um, there was a couple years ago. I'm guessing um John Williams was being honored at Harvard's commencement. Mm -hmm. Um, he I think he was getting like an honorary degree, or he was the commencement speaker, or something like that. Yeah, and they brought up like one of Harvard's acapella groups. <laughs> Say, John, Mr. Williams, we have a little something for you, and they like did all his scores like do an ac acapella, and I'm like, that's <laughs> that's cool. So in fun video like, of that. Biggest grin on his face. Oh, and that's he's great. Laughing, but not like laughing, like, oh my God, this is so stupid. He's like, oh my God, I'm having such a good time. That's funny. But, um, that's funny. Yeah, John Williams' Star Wars is my number three. Don't kill me for the other two, folks. Remember my list. It's Bill's list. My number three. Well, we almost swiped right. Oh, we did? We almost did. My number three is actually a bit of a surprising for maybe this might be surprising for some people about how high it is, but it's actually the most recent Star Trek films. That's that score there. Those, th and I know Bill hasn't seen them yet, but like Bill, get on it. 
<laughs> like I'll get on it. Michael Giacchino's score in uh, uh, Star Trek, Star Trek Into Darkness, and, to, and Star Trek Beyond are. Oh my god! <laughs> like, they are so tense. Like you can go on Spotify, and you can look up the actual co- the the scores on Spotify, and the, apparently the end credits to Star Trek Two Thousand Nine has like five million streams a month, which is amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah, but like the like Darth Vader's Imperial March is like sixty six million, but whatever. Like whatever. Like the fact is that these score that the, this Star Trek score that came in with Michael Giacchino is really good. I I. Seriously, I do recommend listening to it. I just closing your eyes, turning off all the lights in your house or your apartment or whatever, and just putting on this score. It's like you're actually in space. It's that good. Um, so my number three are the new run of the Star Trek movies. And my, my, that kind of threw you off, guys. Kind of threw you off. The new run of the Star Trek movies, uh, Star Trek 2009, Into Darkness and Beyond. The composer was Michael Giacchino. And that is my number three film scores list of number three. Bill, what's your number two? My number two, my second Danny Elfman, oh. Batman. Uh, I knew you knew you're gonna say that. My num- I just love the, I just love the opening. The yeah. when they're showing the credits, the. And it just has first it begins and the music just swells up and you're like oh yeah, oh yeah that. Do, 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 do. I mean, like, oh my god, this is so. It's just so intense, but yet it's just so. And, and it just gets you so pumped up. And like the ending that I talked about last week, when they're like, "Call me." Well, how do we call him? He gave us this, and then the do, do, right. do, and then it plays it again. Um, oh, that's so iconic. And you know what? It's like it's like when I sit back and I talk about Edward Scissorhands. Um, <laughs> this I would say was one of Danny Elfman's more serious scores, because, like I said, I'm sorry, I'm repeating old talking points here. Um, You're good. Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice were like the quirky, you know. Yeah, like, hey. which I like. I like them, but this is like. I feel like Danny Elfman kind of matured in his sound a little bit in Batman and Edward Scissorhands. I think so. I think he did. I think his sound is a little more mature now. Um, But um, yeah, I just, I absolutely love it. It just gets you so pumped up and you have, like I said last week, the biggest nerdgasm you've ever had in your life. It's a pretty big nerdgasm. Yeah. Okay. So what is your number two, buddy? Well, your number three is my number two, my friend. My number two is Star Wars. Really? Original trilogy, number two. I said, like, you can't get any more iconic than the Imperial March, than the main title, than the Ewok Yub Nub Dance. Like, it's so iconic. There's so much to the Star Wars theme in general. It's like, the it, listen, when you think of theme songs, you typically think of theme songs, like, and, and, like from, from, a Star Wars or Indiana Jones or like um, Jaws or even Superman the movie. Well, I didn't put it. It's not my number one, but like it's definitely up there for me as an honorable mention. Uh, it's Superman the movie. That Superman score is amazing. Batman as well from 89. It's great. Um, but the, my, you can't get any more iconic than the Star Wars trilogy and it's iconic score. It's fanfare. Everything about it is pricelessly amazing. So my number two Star Wars, the original trilogy in particular. Bill, what's your number one? All right. Drum roll, please. You might find this weird. My number one. You look frustrated. I forgot about Rocky. Oh, for a moment there, I thought we swiped right. Um, no, <laughs> we um, could. Yeah, no, my number one is Rocky. It's oh just, I just love, like, it's mainly the same theme, but I just love how they do with it. it how at the beginning you hear the, you hear the, and then of course, you know, I love how they, Bill Conti, how he just slows it down. And makes, 
Oh okay, yeah, it's the same score, same notes. It's just drawn out differently. Yeah, it's just like you, you, you would think, oh my god, I have to hear the same thing over and over again. But it, it, he doesn't make it that obvious. No, 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 no. He doesn't really make it that obvious, and that's what I love about it. And then, of course. And you see the gonna fly now. And you and you hear the that's just the one that you just and we did a commentary of that last year. Oh yeah, literally about a year ago, yeah. Yeah, right before all this shit got bad. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> yeah, thanks, COVID. Um, but when you hear the, you hear him running up the stairs in the most like iconic scene, and then the do 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 do. I'm gonna one day. I'm gonna do that. I'm telling. You, I'm gonna go to Philadelphia and do that one day. And then, yeah, I just think it's just such an epic theme that makes you want to get up and take a run. No, of wanna, course. No, there are times I've actually when I've gone on my walk slash runs and I play that I'm running up the road. Do do do. So yeah, my number one is Rocky. All right, I'm putting that in my honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Superman the movie, Batman, and Rocky. May I give some of my honorable mentions? Go ahead, really quick. Superman. Yes. Jurassic Park. Oh, another good one. Um, also, hmm, what else? Um, I kind of like the music score to La La Land. The soundtrack's better. I'll talk about that. So I'll put that there. Okay. So, yeah, this is, you said this was an easy list to make. This is kind of semi hard for me, but. Yeah, uh, my, my number one was pretty straightforward because it's like. My youth is exploding out. Like is it is what I think it is. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, the greatest trilogy of all time, Indiana Jones. There's Can't four of them. Fuck the fourth one. <laughs> it doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Um, what an embarrassment to the film community. Anyways, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and The Last Crusade. Amongst my favorite films of all time. And the score that John Williams created is so iconic and so amazing. He had to do it for three films. Uh, there is no fourth one. What are you talking about? Um, I think that this is the most, one of the, this is an iconic film score that transcends time. And Bill said this before. It really does make you feel like you're on an adventure. Like it's the perfect adventure score. Like music to hear while you're out there like i i like when i if i was just driving around in my car or like I, if i was on a hike i would pretend i'm in like peru trying to get tracked down the idol come on like that's that's how i'd feel at least so anyways my number one is indiana jones uh from the from the the, well, the best trilogy of all time um just putting it there's out there. only three there's only th there's there's always been three what are you talking about like come on fourth one fourth one fourth one it sucks um anyways <laughs> anyways my number one is indiana jones but that will do it for us guys for our top 10 film scores thank you so much for sitting through this video you guys are the best tell I hope us your you favorite film scores in the comments yes please jump down in the comment section below we'd love to hear your thoughts on what anything we've talked about what's your favorite film score is it one that we have never heard of before is it one from the 40s or 50s please sound off in the comment section below We'd love to hear your thoughts. But for all of, I want to thank Bill for joining me, by the way. he Thank you so much, my friend. You're doing a great job. Thank um, you. And I, we'll I'm having be, a blast. I will, I will be uploading videos uh, later today, of course, and over tomorrow as well, just to keep things going on the channel. Also, tomorrow, uh, next week we'll be live. Um, the only the technical difficulties was that uh, for some reason, uh, we record our videos with Zoom. And we're live on YouTube with Zoom. Zoom, the monthly payment somehow lapsed. And I'm going to try and get it back. And I'm going to get it back probably by next week. Uh, well, so we're ready for next week. Excuse me. 
um, that we are all set and we should have a good time. And uh, Bill has got some stuff coming up on the YouTube channel as well. He's gonna oh, he's gonna send me some stuff. So look for look for that. Look for a couple movie reviews coming in the next month or two. And uh, yeah. And don't so. forget, I hate to shamelessly plug my other channel, Movie Horlicks Productions. Oh, of course. The, the, well, he does great work over there. I mean, really, yeah. he does so much good stuff. Really, seriously. Yeah, we're also, um, Justin and I, we're, if you remember our old series, Core Reviews, we're bringing it back as Couch Reviews. I love it. I do recommend it. And we're doing, well, we haven't had our first episode yet. I, I'm our saying, first I recommend episode that. Is, is going to be WandaVision. Ooh, they're, they're going to be reviewing the whole thing. So take a look for that on their channel. Yeah. And we're going to be doing like a lot of the other Marvel stuff on Disney Plus and just a lot of the other, you know, and, yeah. you know, maybe some, and maybe we're going to be doing the Snyder cut. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. I can't wait. So, um, yeah, check out for that. And I'll be, ha- I'll be pumping out some reviews here. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then, anyway, anyway, guys, we want to thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are the best. Also, jump down in the comment section below. Leave your thoughts and your videos, uh, your videos, uh, your film scores that you love to hear and listen to all the time. Jump down in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your it thoughts. It could be the ones you blast in your car like JT does. Yes, just like Mission Impossible. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Thank you so much for watching this video. So, for the Super View Show and Movie Holics Productions, my name is J-Man, and I'm off to work. And I'm Bill Murphy. And don't forget to check out my podcast, Sports Insanity Podcast. God damn. You know, we couldn't go, I couldn't go one show without. Hey, I promoted us in our last and my last podcast. So all right, all right. I'll give you that. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bill Murphy, Sports Sports Insanity Podcast and Movie Hawks Productions. We'll be back next week live. You guys are awesome. Stay safe, be awesome, and live long and prosper. <laughs>